So you're ready to start giving extemp speeches. Now what? The first step is learning how to research questions. Remember, the first thing that happens when you give an extemp speech is you draw three questions and you select one of them to speak on. While it might feel overwhelming at first to try to give a coherent speech on different topics every time you give a speech, the good news is that the more you stick with extemp, the more well-versed you'll become in current events, and so it'll get easier to construct speeches. But certainly at the very beginning of the process, you'll probably spend a lot of time just doing the basic research on your question so that you can construct a meaningful speech. At nearly every tournament, each round has a topic area that helps to narrow the choices for questions. So for U.S. extemp, you might have politics one round, economics the next round, um, and some other topics might be social issues, science and technology, or foreign policy. For international extemp, rounds are typically grouped by region. So you'll have an Asia round, a Europe round, an Africa round, the Americas, or maybe even international organizations. For our purposes, um, in this class, as you're doing practice speeches week after week, you'll mainly be using Extemp Central to find your weekly questions. So if you just Google Extemp Central, you'll find the top link gives you new questions each week. And it's grouped by international Extemp questions and US Extemp questions. So feel free to use these for your practice speeches. Um, alternately, you could reach out to the Varsity members, uh, particularly your big brother, to get other questions. For instance, if you're trying to give a speech on an area that isn't covered here. One very important note about giving practice speeches, even though you're not necessarily going to do the extemp draw each time you give a practice speech where you pull three questions and select one on the spot, typically for practice speeches, you select a topic and then give a speech, prepare it at home and then come to school and give that speech. Um, it's vital that you do not just give speeches on topics that you're familiar with. If every week you find yourself giving the speeches on very similar topics, then you'll be very limited in terms of what you can speak on, and you could then find yourself in a dangerous situation if you draw a question that you don't know anything about at a tournament or at the end of this particular class. So especially for practice speeches, it's really important that you push yourself out of your comfort zone and give speeches on topics that you don't know a ton about, right? So if on a daily basis, you're actually following what's going on with the 2020 election, particularly the Democratic primaries, you should actually avoid giving speeches on that every week. You want to make sure that you're growing in terms of the topic areas that you know. So let's get more specific. Let's say you're a U.S. extemper and you decide to give a speech on the following question. Is impeachment a more likely possibility after Mueller's testimony? What do you do now? We'll use this speech topic for the rest of this video just, just to be concrete. So obviously at a tournament, or for your final speech day in rhetoric, you won't be able to use the internet and you'll only have 30 minutes to prepare a speech. But for these opening weeks, as you're developing knowledge about current events and learning the basics of extemp, it's of course okay to use the internet and spend longer than 30 minutes preparing a speech. By the third or fourth week though, you should really try to limit yourself to 30 minutes so that you do not develop bad habits. But for this first week, I think it's really important that you spend more time researching your first extemp question so that you have a good grasp over what you're going to speak about. So the first thing you do after you pull a question, and our question here is, is impeachment a more likely possibility after Mueller's testimony? The first thing you have to do is research. And a ton of research in extemp, in fact, pretty much all of it, happens before you even get your question. Now, obviously, for our purposes this week, that's not possible. But a big part of extemp is being part of the team and doing research together, filing and highlighting articles so that everyone can quickly find evidence during the round. You can imagine how overwhelming it would be to try to master all of these issues entirely on your own. So that's why we have you attend the after school meetings, because it's so important that you're plugged in to the team and working together with others to find all of these articles. Now, obviously, you can't read every article on every potential issue before a tournament, but it's important that the first time you learn about a topic is not during the 30 minutes of prep before you give a speech. That would obviously be very intimidating and overwhelming to try to master a topic and research it for the first time when you're at a tournament. Thus, it's important that you're actually reading articles from credible sources every day. Ideally, you're reading at least four to five articles from sources like the New York Times or The Economist. Um, and if you continue to keep yourself well-versed on the news, then you'll find that these extemp questions get a lot easier. Um, so that's one thing that you should be doing. And second, 
right? Like I said before, you wanna make sure you're picking topics and questions that you don't know well so that you're expanding your knowledge. Once you get more officially onboarded with the Extemp team, you'll get access to an awesome tool, Extemp Genie, which allows you to automatically search for articles from a ton of curated news sources. You'll work with the team to file good articles under specific categories so that it's easy to find quality articles during your preparation time. Moreover, Extemp Genie lets you file and save all the articles offline so that you can access all of them during a tournament setting. Think of it as sort of an offline Google for credible news sources where you can organize, file, and highlight your articles. Let's take a look at how it works. So if you just search a term like impeachment, you'll see that hundreds of articles come up. So you can think of it like Google. Um, and then you just click on the articles that look useful and they'll show up on the side. And if you then click on those articles, you can get access to the full article in a readily readable form. And from here, you can highlight lines that you find important. It's a really useful tool that will make your life a lot easier as an extemper. Um, we adopted it a couple years ago and it's really changed the game. Back in the day, um, extempers used to have to carry around tubs filled with cutouts from newspapers and magazines that they would tape to pieces of paper and have to manually highlight them. It was a ton of work, not just to find the articles, but also to physically cut them and put them in the tub and organize them. And it was not nearly as efficient as the digital tools and sources are now. So consider yourself lucky. You have some awesome tools at your disposal um, and you'll definitely get set up with that. But even if you don't have the access to Extemp Genie this week, that is totally fine. You can find everything that you need just with the help of Google. Um, that said, you're not just looking for any Google article though. For Extemp, you want credible news sources. And the best publications that our Extempers rely on again and again are sources like The Economist, The New York Times, The Guardian, The Wall Street Journal, Washington Post, The LA Times, BBC, Atlantic, Christian Science Monitor, and Reuters. These sources go beyond sound bites and tabloid clickbait. They provide in-depth expert commentary that helps provide a more nuanced perspective on these issues. So the first thing you have to learn how to do is one, find the core argument of an article, and two, find powerful quotes. Most of the time, it's pretty easy to find these types of articles, right? If you were to type in uh, Trump impeachment, Mueller testimony on Google, you'd get a ton of articles. Or if you, do, if you were to just type in impeachment, you would find a ton of articles. And once you just narrow it down to those uh, credible sources that I mentioned above, it's pretty easy to find a lot of them, right? On the New York Times alone, just typing in impeachment, I was able to find nearly seven articles almost immediately that spoke to exactly this issue. Um, so before you get a Extemp Genie, a pro tip once you find an article that you think is promising is to save it to your computer by clicking Control P, which is print, and then click the option of print to PDF. That way you can highlight the article, right? You can open it up as a PDF file, and then you can just select the text and highlight it. Um, and that'll be useful while you're waiting to get onboarded with Extemp Genie because that way you can save all of your files and then you can highlight the most important lines. So for our question about impeachment, you'll find a ton of articles talking about the most recent events surrounding this issue. And let's take a look at an example. This Economist article on impeachment titled, Impeachment Looks Even Less Likely Now Than Before Mueller's Testimony. Huh, I wonder what argument this article is going to make. So if you read this article, you'll find out that, yes, the core argument is that Mueller's testimony has not made peach impeachment more likely. And if you read carefully, you'll find a central passage like this one, which certainly deserves to be highlighted. Let's take a look here. But Mr. Mueller, who stammered, asked for questions to be repeated and answered questions with either clipped one-word replies or legalistic language did not help their case. He refused to read portions of the report aloud for fear of becoming a political prop in their campaign um, leaving the various questioning congressmen to stage their own dramatic readings. Throughout much of the day, it appeared that the congressmen were testifying to Mr. Mueller rather than the other way around. For Democrats, this was deflating. So by highlighting and saving these articles in an organized way, you'll make it dramatically easier to put your speech outline together after you've done all your research. Otherwise, you'll be scrambling to look back at articles and try to find the quotes, and you'll waste a ton of precious preparation time. 
Yes, Extemp Genie will make this process easier, but learning the basic skills of how to do this on your own is incredibly valuable so that you can learn the basic skills yourself. And constantly when you are reading um, articles just on your own, trying to become more well-versed on the news, you should always be asking yourself, what is the central argument that this article is making? Let's look at another article, this time from the New York Times. Support for impeachment grows in the House. Hmm, this seems to be making the opposite claim. And notice that this article is more recent, from August 1st, as opposed to the Economist article, which was from July 25th. So it's probably reporting on events that happened after the publication of the Economist article. That's important to note. Let's see the article's central argument. Notice that articles almost always forefront the most important claims at the beginning of the article. They sort of expect that readers will trail off and stop reading about halfway through. Um, and they should typically be pretty easy to find. So that's what you want to highlight, those central claims. And I think we can see it in, the, in this New York Times article right here. The trickle of Democrats coming out in favor of opening a full impeachment inquiry is threatening to turn into a flood, raising pressure on Speaker Nancy Pelosi to take the full House vote she has tried to avoid all year. This week alone, a dozen Democrats have announced their support for an inquiry with at least 116 declared supporters. The backers of an impeachment inquiry are more than halfway to the 20, 218 votes they need in the House. They are too shy of a majority of the Democratic caucus. It was not necessarily supposed to go that way. The House's departure last Friday was expected to lower the temperature around the prospect of a formal impeachment inquiry against President Trump. An unexpected declaration by the House Judiciary Committee in the court papers on Friday that an impeachment investigation was effectively already underway might well have cooled matters further. But far from relieving pressure, the Judiciary Committee's legal maneuver may have actually eased the way for more Democrats to come forward. So, okay, we found the central argument here, right? Impeachment, more and more Democrats are actually hopping on board with impeachment. But this is the next thing you have to ask yourself. What are the justifications or the warrants, and warrant is just a fancy word for reason why or justification, what are the warrants that support the central claim of this article, right? This article argues that more Democrats are coming out in favor of impeachment, that impeachment is becoming more probable. What is the justification for that? So in this case, what has caused impeachment to gather steam? Well, this article seems to argue that the House Judiciary Committee started an investigation just to see whether a formal impeachment inquiry should be leveled against Trump. In fact, it looked like Pelosi kind of gave this her blessing because she thought that this would cool the temperament. This would get Democrats less on board with impeachment because some process had started. But instead of actually cooling off their temperament, it looks like it only made it easier for more Democrats to come forward, right? It lowered the barrier and now more Democrats are hopping on board. So these are the types of details, uh, right? This explanation of why the claim is true that are really important in extemp. A bad extemper would say, according to the New York Times on August 1st, uh, more Democrats are now supporting impeachment and just leave it at that. But a good extemper would provide the explanation of why more and more Democrats are coming out to support impeachment and use the New York Times article to substantiate that claim. So as you're researching your topic tonight, be on the lookout for credible articles and be sure to highlight the most important quotes and jot down notes on the underlying warrants and justifications that the article uses to support its main claim. That is the most important skill that you need to start to develop. As you research your question, don't just look for an immediate answer, right? This article says it's more likely or this article says it's less likely. Always be asking yourself why. Why is this claim true? What are the warrants here? And how could I explain that within an extemporaneous speech? And this is the type of research that any extemper has to do before crafting an outline, especially extempers like you who are just starting to get a grip on extemp. You'll find that if you do this research step thoroughly and you're actually looking for warrants and justifications, you'll find a, you'll have a much easier time crafting an outline where you have to create subpoints based around those justifications and warrants. So hopefully this helped in terms of just the basic first step that you have to do as an extemper. Uh, if you have more questions, feel free to let me know.